Hello there, once again, this is Steve from the uh, Wordly Bogger, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to tie the Tail Gunner October Caddis pattern. Uh, it's that time of year again. Uh, fall is here, and we're fishing October Caddis patterns, getting big hatches of uh, October Caddis. That'll go on through uh, through the month of October, and and into the month of November here in central Washington on the Yakima River. So I'm going to show you how to tie this super effective October caddis pattern that we've come up with. Uh, relatively pretty easy to put together, but super effective. Great for uh, uh, the October caddis hatch, but also uh, very good for, you know, uh, hanging another fly off of. This thing uh, floats like a cork. Really easy to see on the water and uh, creates a great silhouette to, uh, to trout. So... Uh, First thing that you're going to need uh, is a size 8 dry fly hook, long shank. I use the uh, Mustad. It's a R43-94831. It's a good standard light wire dry fly hook. And it's sharp. So put that in your vise. Next thing you're going to need is uh, some 6 off thread. Uh, here. I'm using a uh, uni uh, in color orange so start your thread base behind your eye want to lay down a foundation of thread you know always just so your materials will uh, you know have a foundation and be able to grab rather than turn especially with foam flies um, you know, whenever you don't lay down a thread base, your materials will tend to twist and turn on the body. So good to lay down a, you know, a good standard thick, not overly thick, but you know, enough thread where, you know, the material that you apply is going to grab onto the shank. So the first thing that we're going to do with this fly is we're going to put an egg sack on the back and I'm using ice stub in peacock black so you just take a small amount pull it out and dub it on to your thread kind of the key for dubbing is you know a little bit goes a long ways and some dubbing is easier than others to uh, to apply to the thread but i stub is probably one of our most popular that we sell here at the whirly bugger um, and it's pretty easy. It's a synthetic dubbing. So just wind it around the bend, creating an egg sac until you got a little ball that's formed in the back there. It should look like that. The next thing you're going to need is a brown or furnace hackle feather for the body. So take and strip off the quill. Until it's exposed and then you can tie this in right back behind the, the ball there the egg sac okay and then work your thread forward there's a couple different ways that I build this fly if I got to build a bunch of them and I got to do it quickly um, I'll use a chenille and this is just a micro chenille and orange you can also use the ice dub in orange. It just takes a little bit longer with all the dubbing that you need to use. So for this purpose, I like the chenille body. So strip off a small amount of chenille to expose the cord on the end. And then attach this to your shank. Tighten her down. You want to use about three quarters of the body of the of the shank of the of the hook. So wind your thread. Excuse me, wind your chenille back. You're probably wondering why. Am I wondering if we're going to work it all the way to the uh, to the back of the fly? And 
and stop at the dubbing ball. And this is a pretty good size bug. So the profile that we're trying to create is pretty good size. So we're gonna wind it over the top again, forward, each wrap in front of another, creating a nice uniform body. So once you've got that, once you've got your body chenille tied down and secured, you can cut off the tag. I always like to kind of just do a half hitch there to keep it tight. And then take and palmer your hackle forward through the body four or five times. Working it forward and then tie that off and clip off the excess. So once you have that secu secured, you can cut any other fibers out of there and then work your thread back to the base of the body right here. So the next thing that you're going to need is some foam, three millimeter, two millimeter, and a punch. I usually like to use this round punch uh, to stone fly and uh, works nicely for size 8 and 10. Punches out your foam. You can use a scissor. This is, just makes it quicker and makes a nicer looking fly than what you can actually do with a pair of scissors. So once you've punched your foam out, take it and lay it on top. Of course, this is going to do two different things. This is going to add flotation to the fly, but also is going to create that great silhouette, you know, of a big bug on the water. Um, so lay, lay that right on top, and we're going to secure that with several wraps. And you, you want to make sure that it's tight so the foam's not moving. That's another reason why we you know why we add that thread underneath and we start with thread as a foundation so the foam doesn't twist and move when you're fishing it. So once you have that secured, take and do a half hitch, tighten it down, cut your thread, and then tie your, reconnect your thread right in front of the egg sac there. And we're gonna lay the rest of the body we're going to tie this down to the shank. If you leave it up, it doesn't quite give off the same type of silhouette. And with some casters too, it'll it'll create some some casting problems and some some problems with uh, you know, snagging and tangles. So once you've uh, you've tied that down, then you've created that that foam body on there. Be real careful and cut your thread back off and then reattach it at the front. Cut off your excess thread there. The next thing that you're going to add is your wing. And we're using a shank of polypropylene yarn. This is a widow's web that we get from Yellowstone Fly. It's a nice big chunk of polypropylene floating yarn. So this will also add visibility and also adds flotation. One thing that I can recommend that's great if you do a lot of these types of flies, chubby Chernobyls or, you know, parachute posts with uh, polypropylene yarn, spend three bucks and get this little brush comb. Um, it's great for, for brushing out polypropylene. It makes it nice, gets all the all the funky hair out of there. It makes a nice flat wing for you. So we're gonna take this, and we're gonna get the tips even by cutting them with our scissor. And then you're gonna lay them backwards so the so the wing is actually facing off the front of the fly. 
Okay. And then we're going to tie it down. You want a nice strong thread where you can, you know, where you can really reef on this thing and, and secure that wing down. So once that wing is secured, we're going to pull it back over the top like this. Okay. We want that wing laying down flat, as flat as possible. We don't stick in way, way up in the air. So we're going to run our thread over the top and bind it down like this. See how that wing lays flat back against the, the body of the fly? So then you can take and cut your wing. And that creates your wing. And then once you, you once you apply your floatant, usually we're using Flyagra from Yellowstone Fly. You know, this thing will float like a cork and it'll lay that wing down even more. So the next thing that we're going to add is I, uh, I love these uh, silly legs, especially in this color from Wopsy Fly. They're barred fire tip, uh, sand and orange. So I'm going to take one and uh, I'm going to measure it out so they're fairly even and I'm going to cut them. And since they're two-toned, I'm going to switch the, the color and switch it up. So one color is orange on one side and and uh, the sand on the other. And I'm going to lay those on top of the fly. And very lightly, I'm just going to take a couple of thread wraps and see how those stay in place. The thread and the, the weight of the bobbin is keeping the, the legs in place. So now what you can do is you can pull them down over the side and, and get them attached where you uh, want them to create that profile. Okay, so once you have that, you have them in place, then you can start tightening. You can pull good and it'll splay those legs open for you. Creates a nice profile and th these are real big bugs that we get here, uh, you know, in the Pacific Northwest. A lot of the rivers, uh, get October caddis hatches and our, our river is really famous for them so The rubber legs are going to help give this fly some movement and life uh, As well as create that silhouette of a big bug on the on the water So once we have those legs attached um, They're not going to pull out work your thread back to the base of the wing right here um, I always like to kind of you, you tend to get a little bit of thread built up in here and it's all right you I mean you can leave it like that it's not going to affect how it fishes but um, for just aesthetic purposes I like to take a little bit of dubbing from uh, hairline once again it's a uh, eye stub super popular synthetic dubbing in orange and we'll apply some to the thread And we'll use that as a thorax just to kind of hide that. Uh, through all that thread in there. So you got a nice... This also will help if your legs don't get splayed very well. It'll help splay the legs out evenly, and then it also helps helps lay the wing down. So pull your wing and your two legs in the back. Pull them against the body, and then wrap your your dubbing. Around that thread base just like that. So that, that creates kind of a nice two-tone look on the fly. It also covers up that, that thread, splays the legs properly, brings the wing down even more, 
And once you've done that, just pull this piece of foam up in front and lay a little bit of thread base down. And then about halfway between the eye and the back of the foam, I'll work my, uh, work my thread right to that point and then take your take your foam always leave that foam a little bit longer so it'll so it'll be off the front there and then we're going to take and we're going to connect that we're going to make a segment there and make a few thread wraps You can tighten that down. Usually I like to make about three thread wraps just so it's nice and secure. Make sure you don't get your rubber legs in there in your half hitch. And then once you've done that, you can cut that. And then this piece will be a little bit longer, this foam, this front foam piece. We'll just, we'll cut that off. We want to use a little bit of it so it pushes water as we're fishing the fly, uh, creating a creating kind of a wake on top of the water. And then if the, if the legs tend to be a little bit longer than, than what I like, I'll just trim them back a little bit, just so they're kind of even. You can hold them, hold them up together and cut them. And it should look like that when you're done. Mm. So as you can see, really pretty simple fly to put together. Uh, the tail gunner caddis, October caddis is what we call it. And it's super effective, great for hanging a dropper, uh, you know, behind and fishing through the riffles. You know, great to see, real visible for, for people that have trouble, uh, you know, with their vis vision seeing flies on the water. This is a great one and uh, the fish love it. And uh, anywhere you have uh, good October caddis hatches, this thing will uh, will produce. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, get out and uh, spend some time on the water this fall and uh, enjoy those October caddis hatches.